Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Focal Point Digital Backdrops. My name is Christina and I will be taking you through this tutorial today. This is going to be a bit of a long one. I'm going to do three separate uh, composites here, all with their own challenges. And I'm also going to be walking you through uh, using these pillow options and some of the teddy bear options just so you get a feel for uh, how to make these a little bit more believable get some depth in there and uh, some different textures and whatnot and um, let's just get started I'm going to start with this little lady and the first thing to do with any composite is to check for the direction of light and we want to match up the light direction whenever we're doing composites so that they look absolutely as believable as we can possibly make them. So in this image what I can see here is the light is coming from the top right and I can tell that because there's a highlight here on Santa's cheek and then there's a shadow falling right here and that lets me know that this is the direction of light. So for this particular image we need a matching direction of light and from what we can see here and this is a little bit more difficult to figure out but I can tell right here that the lights coming from this direction because there's a highlight here and I can also see a catch light in her eyes and that's telling me that the light is coming from this direction as well so we already have a matching direction of light and we also have a very similar color tone to the color tone here on this couch and that's really going to help out when it comes to doing this composite and making it look believable so let's start by using the quick selection tool and select our subject All of this just takes time. Be a little bit boring, I think, but it is what it is. We just have to go through these steps, get to the final product. You'll see that I'm actually going to use the couch that she's sitting on to blend her into the couch in the backdrop. And we can do that because it's of similar color tone. So now that I have roughly cut this out, I'm going to click Select and Mask. And as you can see, it didn't select this part of her toque, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, click Alt to deselect this part. Okay. It's not going to be perfect, it never is, but this is a rough go. We're going to click OK. And the arrow tool, and I'm just going to pick her up and drop her into this backdrop. As you can see, she's quite a bit too big for the size of Santa. So we're going to go Control T and grab the corner and hold the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio as we make her a bit smaller here. And I think that's pretty close to the right size. And we'll just push her back a little bit and click the check mark. You may or may not be able to see on this video that there's this black outline here it's one of those annoying things about uh, doing selections in Photoshop. You always have to make sure to go back and find that and make sure to delete it. Uh, to do a straight line uh, selection in Photoshop, what you do is click the first point, go to the second point, hold the shift key and click again and then it will post, do a straight line for you and that will delete that black square. Again, it's pretty annoying, but 
it is one of those things we just have to deal with in Photoshop. Okay, so I've gotten rid of the square. I did delete some of her foot, so I'm going to go back in with the white brush and paint, oopsie, and paint that back in. And some of her foot's actually missing anyways, as you can probably tell from the bottom of that original photo. So I'm just going to round it off and no one will ever know. There's a bit of distortion anyways because this is a cell phone photo. And there's a bit of the wide angle distortion on there. So I'm just going to clean up the edges here. can see that part of her toque or hat hasn't been selected, so I'm going to do that manually. There's always a bit of artifact when it comes to the quick selection tool, so you just have to make sure that you get it all. Okay. I think that selection is looking pretty good. I can see here part of the couch, so I'm just going to remove that. Couch from the original image, I mean. Come in around her cheek, just nice and smooth. And in here. Just make sure we have the whole dress. And there we go. Now, I feel as though she might still be a little bit big, so we're just going to control T again and bring it down a bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to make sure and click on her layer, go into the camera raw filter, and I think we're going to warm her up a little bit, and she's a bit bright. So, I'm going to turn down the exposure. And then I'm going to add a bit of warmth, and I'm going to move her into the magenta as well a little bit. Let's see how that looks. That's maybe a little bit dark, but we can add some light in on her after. Let's just fade that a little bit. Okay, so here is my f very common trick to um, land her on this couch in a more believable way. There are, let's go back to the original image here, she's already on a very similarly colored couch and so there are natural shadows here that we don't need to create. So what we can do is come back in here and click on the layer mask and then we're going to add back part of the original image at a low opacity. I'm going to come in at about say 24-25% a nice soft brush and I'm just going to click around here on the edges to land her into this scene using shadows from the original image. You can only do this if the color toning is similar. I'm going to show you on some of the other on one of the other samples how to do this if the color toning isn't similar. I'm just going to remove this a little bit here. I'm just slowly clicking it in just a little bit at a time. I want to increase the brush size. So we get a bit of a softer feathering out, so we add in the shadows in a softer way there. And as you can see, it's starting to look more and more believable, her sitting on this couch. Okay, let's come back in at the front and delete this line. Smooth it out. Doing everything at low opacity, so just a little bit's coming in at a time. 
and I just come in from the edges and I'm just smoothing it out a little bit there. I'm really liking the way that's looking. That's looking quite believable, actually. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to add the one of the pillows or two of the pillows and and possibly a teddy bear because she's so little this is actually she's only taking up a small space on this couch and it just looks a little bit empty so for a bit more visual interest why don't we add some pillows in here so these pillows come as a layered file and they're all named so that they're easy to find and I think let's add in this falala pillow just going to drag and drop here control T and maybe one more how about this solid red pillow grab it and drop it I'm gonna move it behind her behind her lair sorry okay let's move this falala pillow behind her as well let's move it behind the red pillow it on top so let's do this and let me move this one over a little bit and maybe increase the size of it okay we need to land these pillows in this scene so here's how we're going to do it I'm going to make a copy and then I'm going to go to this original and I'm going to add curves layer, clip it, and then bring it all the way down to black, and then I'm going to control E to make these one layer, pillow shadow, okay, now we're going to go to Gaussian blur, And blur it by about 40 I guess and then we obviously want the shadow to be on the left hand side of the pillow because the light is coming from top and, and right and so we want that to match and there we go okay now we're gonna do the same thing with the falala pillow add a curves layer clip it and pull the top corner all the way down to black This is the fall shadow. Okay, and we'll add the Gaussian blur again and move it over. And we might want to move this pillow down a little bit. It's not quite landed in the scene. And these shadows look a bit harsh, so I'm going to actually turn the opacity down. Same with the other one. Excellent. Okay, now let's fill this in here and add a teddy bear. Maybe a dark one. Let's see how this one looks. And then drop it in there. Let's put this layer on top so it's that this teddy bear is in front. And you can make it as big or as small as you like. Maybe we'll put them right there. Hmm. I think it might be a bit bright, so let's remove this one and we'll put in uh, this one. Okay, Control T to change the size. I 
this is a better color for, th for this. And we're going to have to add a shadows layer to land him into this scene. So I'm going to go um, name this Daddy, and make it called B. Add a curves layer, clip it, pull down the corner, hold down the shift key to select them both and then control E to make one flat teddy shadow and we're going to blur that and move it over and down a bit okay and it's a bit harsh so there we go now we have pillows with their shadows and the teddy with the shadow and then we have this little lady and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of sparkle to this I always love to add in a twinkle to the book and around the subject and it just makes it look a little bit more magical so let's add a new layer and then I'm going to select one of these yellows from the scene. Not loving these yet. Maybe up into here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my sparkle brush. turn up the opacity all the way to 100 and then I'm going to add in sparkles from this book and this is going to be a flavor to taste sort of a situation um, there are sparkle brushes out there on the internet I do not have any for sale there we go I like that I'm going to add a little bit over here and maybe I will remove a few from around her face. Okay, excellent. And then maybe I'll just add a few more in the corner. A little bit of magic over here, a little bit there, a little bit by the feet. Again, this is going to be up to you. This is where you get creative and, and add your own flavor to the composite. And I like to add sparkles around Santa quite a bit. Okay, so now for the final touches for this image, I'm going to create a flat uh, JPEG here, and I'm going to go Control Alt Shift E, and that's a, a stamp all visible. And that's, um, what that does is just create a flat image from everything below it. And now I can work just on this. I'm going to come into the camera raw filter. And to finish these off, I always like to add in texture and clarity. And again, this is a flavor to taste. I like to dial it up pretty high. And then I'm going to just warm this up a tiny bit, just by one, and into the magenta a little bit. And now I'm going to add a light direction onto our subject, and to do that I'm going to add a radial gradient. And so here we go, just going to pull that out, and again, as we said at the top of the video, the light direction is coming from the top and the right and so that is what we want for our radial gradient that we're adding this is where the light will start and it will come down this way so I'm just going to increase the exposure and this is also going to be up to you how you want to do this how stark you want it to be, how subtle you want it to be. If you want it to be more subtle, you pull these out. If you want it to be very directed, you pull it in nice and tight. And you can add uh, warmth in here as well. If
if you like. And she's looking nice and warm there. And I like the highlight on her, so I'm going to click OK. And I think that we're pretty close to being done this composite. I'm really liking it. I might just darken the edges a little bit. So I'm going to multiply or to duplicate this layer and then go to the multiply function and just ever so slightly I'm going to multiply darken with a soft brush in the corners and down around feet and that will just draw your eye in on the subject okay so Let's do uh, Control Alt Shift E, that's stamp visible again. And then now we're going to add in a matte curves layer. So we're just going to pull up the shadows a little bit and then adjust that way. And that's just going to give a bit more of a matte toning to your final image and that's my preference but again that's completely up to you so I feel like this is a finished image I'm really happy with this and if you uh, don't want to watch me do another one then I would uh, invite you to click off of the video now I hope this was helpful uh, please feel free to send um, a message through here or through Etsy uh, myself or Christopher will be answering them as soon as we have a chance. Okay, so now that we are done this, I'm just going to flatten it and I'm going to save it. And so that I can add that later. Okay. Now let's go back and remove all of this and do a second composite. Okay, let's start with this one. So as you can see already, this is probably a little bit bright and this color tone does not match this color tone. So we've got a couple of things to do here. First and foremost, I'm going to adjust the brightness, and this is also quite cool, so I'm going to warm this up, and I'm going to turn down the brightness, and we're going to come back in here, and the direction of light does not match, so we have the direction of light coming this way in the backdrop from the top and right, and in this image it's coming from the top and the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over this image, image rotation flip, okay. Now I'm going to select our subject. Photoshop will generally do it for you, but not always. So the parts that aren't right, you just hit the Alt key and deselect. We do want her dress. Okay, we want her whole foot. Select and mask. Lately I've been using the refine hair tool and I'm happy with the way that it turns out. So click OK. And now we're going to drop her into this backdrop. Now as you can see there's nothing here for her to be leaning on. So what I'm going to do Actually, let's cancel that. Let's delete that. Come back here.
Okay, let's start again. <laughs> now we're going to get practice in um, selecting subjects, but let's do this for now. Let's change this color so that it matches this color, so that when we try to use her sh real shadows from here, then that, that will make life easier. So let's add a layer. We're going to sample the color tone, probably from the darker part, maybe up a little bit, and then go ahead and paint bucket, and then alt layer mask to hide the layer mask, and then we're going to come in with color, and it's a soft brush, not a high opacity, low opacity, and we're going to just change the color here. Change the color of the couch. You don't have to do the whole thing, just where you're close in to the subject because we're not going to be using the whole thing, obviously. Okay, there we go. Let's flatten that down, and then now we're going to use qu quick selection. And hold down the Alt key to deselect. And we're going to go ahead and select and mask fine here. Okay, these are never going to be perfect selections, but that's okay. We can add them back because we have the layer mask. We'll just drag and drop and resize. This is an older child, so she's going to take up a bit more space. And to fill this in here, I'm going to add one of the pillows that I've shown before. So I'm actually going to move her a little bit closer to Santa and I'm going to tuck her feet in behind that fur. Let's see what this looks like. This is a bit of a wonky angle. I should have actually been a little bit more um, down to her level to take this image, but we can work with it. Not the end of the world. Okay, so I think for ease we're going to tuck her feet in first. So let's select the layer mask and then go to the black and we're going to paint away her feet here. So they're tucked in. And again this just makes it look a little bit more believable like she was actually there with Santa. Okay, let's clean up this layer mask here. We've got some of the couch here. And we're missing fingers. Those are important. Let's add the finger back and then we'll come around. Come in nice and close. And we're definitely going to add pillows in here. Make sure we've got 
got her whole arm here. Just clean up a little bit around this crown. out. Okay, let's see. Let's add some pillows. What pillows would we like to add that will go? I think it might be nice to add in this blue pillow. Give a nice pop of color. And let's add it beneath her so that it looks like she's leaning on it. squish it down so it's under her hands here. And we can make this more believable with some shadowing from her hands. Let's get it right under her elbow. Okay. We'll address that in a bit. I'm going to add in the shadows from here like we did with the last one. We did change the color tone, so we're going to go back and do a low opacity brush again and add in, let's zoom in here, we're going to add in the shadows just gently, ever so gently click with that soft brush around and you will see believable shadowing in no time. I added a bit there by accident, okay, and we're going to come in with the white, add in shadows. And I did a little bit too much there, so... Now th these are this is just one technique to add shadows. There's a whole bunch of different techniques to use and actually on some of my other videos I have used different techniques. Um, I'm going to show you on a different video maybe or maybe at the end of this video uh, another technique. I'm just going to add in some shadows right here where the pillow is. Just to make things look a little more believable. Okay. Perfect. I think she looks fairly landed in this scene. I think I'm also going to add some shadowing behind her. And this pillow is a little bright for my taste, so I'm going to actually lower the exposure. Now, I'm going to multiply this layer, and I'm going to add a curves layer, clip, and I'm going to pillow shadows, and we're going to blur that in the Gaussian blur and move the shadows away and turn down the opacity to about 50%, even lower if you want. The idea is to make things look believable. Okay, so we need a shadow coming off of her here because it's just a little bit too bright. So, now that we've added um, the shadows from the original image, I'm going to apply the layer mask here and I'm going to copy her. Let's 
Sorry, curves layer, clip it, and this will be her shadow. Now we're not going to want the whole shadow because as you see, it's just too much. I'm going to blur this, hit OK, and then move it away. And then really turn the opacity down. quite a bit. And then I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm going to paint it off. It's just too much, but I wanted her shadow for this part here. So I'm going to paint it off with a black brush at 100%. do want it here though. Okay, and now I I also want more shadow on this pillow, so I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to add a layer mask, uh, multiply, and then I'm going to come down in here. And this is sort of like the burn tool, similar situation as a burn tool. And then I'm actually going to use the burn tool right under her fingers here. Just to darken this down. It's a little too bright. Makes it not super believable. A little bit too much there. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to come into the background and I'm going to do the same thing. Add a multiply and I'm going to add shadows from her just by darkening the background. Good, and that's just ever so subtle. There's before and after. She would be blocking light, but not up that high, so I'm going to just delete. Delete black brush up high here. Okay, I like this. Now maybe we even want to add a teddy bear in to this part so that it fills in a little bit more, make things a little bit more believable. So let's add let's try adding this one. Control T, and we'll just make it ever so slight. I like that. And then it actually even covers up where her hands land, and then um, that makes it even a little bit more believable here. So this will need its own shadow layer. So we're going to copy, go down here, add the curves, and clip it, and then. Let's do a blur on the shadow for Teddy. Okay, and then we're going to move it over. And we're going to turn it down. And that's looking great. I feel like there's a little bit too much light on this side of her face, so I'm actually going to come in and or to duplicate this layer, the subject, and then I'm going to multiply to darken in on this side of her face, just at a low opacity, just to blend her more into this scene. Let's turn that up a bit. Okay, let's see before after it's uh, okay. I need to move this on top. There we go. Too much. Whoa. Okay. 
this one a little bit. Oops. Just a little bit. Excellent. Okay, now what we're going to do is take some of these wrinkles out of her dress. First we're going to stamp visible like we did in the last one, so control alt shift E. Now I'm working on a flattened image and I can work on her uh, face a little bit as well because I'm going to add a little bit of color here. And um, But let's first work on these wrinkles a little bit. I'm not going to take them all out but we can use the um, the patch tool and just come in and take some of these wrinkles out. And a bruise here, let's take that out. I will not bore you to tears uh, by removing all of these wrinkles. I should have steamed this dress as we can all see. Oops. Just let's get the major ones out. They look terrible. Okay, that's a good start. I would spend the time to uh, fix these, but that's just me. I can be like that. Okay, now I'm going to add in a little bit of red on her cheeks here and maybe some highlights. Uh, so I'm first of all, I'm going to go to levels and into the green channel here and pull it over so there's quite a bit of red and then back up into the red and even further and invert this and then come back with a very low opacity and add a bit of red into her cheeks and maybe oops maybe a little bit on her chin and just add a little bit more on the lips I got a little bit too much on this cheek so just come back in with the black brush and remove it and I'd like a little bit more over here okay Perfect, so let's flatten this, control E, and then we're going to multiply or duplicate it again, and I'm going to put a layer mask and go into screen and add some highlights. We're going to add highlights in on the cheeks, in the hair, maybe on the dress a little bit. So wherever you would put highlights in uh, when you're doing makeup, that's where I tend to add them on my subjects. So right here, on the end of the nose, right in on the, above the lip, on the chin, in the corner of the eyes, down the bridge, up on the brow bone, and you can just add a little bit of highlight where you see the catch lights here in her eyes. Okay, now well, for that painterly look, you can come down the arm, add some highlight, down this arm, all of the creases in the dress would get a highlight. This is going to be up to you. Again, that's going to be a flavor to taste type situation. Um, and if you want to make this even more noticeable. Here, let's add some in the front of her hair. I'd like to add some right there. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and you can see that's going to be even more highlighted. And that's going to be up to you. If you like that look or if you don't like that look, it's, it's really up to you. Personally, I think you can't go too far for Christmas images. They're sort of a free-for-all. Uh, you can get away with a lot of stuff. I'm going to add in a uh, multiply layer here just to add some more shadowing. 
right here at her chin. A little too much. This is too high. Okay, and then in the shadows of the dress, at the arms. And a little bit. Okay, around the hairline. Perfect. And we might want to go back to the highlight layer and add a highlight on the leg since we added a highlight on the arm. And right here on the top of the shoes. And then let's add a shadow as well. Okay, now let's add some twinkle to this, so a new layer. We're going to go back to our spark brush. Again, there's lots of brushes available out there on the internet. The one I have here is from Somarina, or Somarina, however you say it. And here we go. Let's turn up and add sparkles. Add them to the book. I love that color. Let's try again. That's not the color we want. We want somewhere in here. More yellow. Warmer. There we go. Okay. Better. And then we have sparkles on her. Too many. We can them off. We don't really want them on her face. And then we will add more. Okay, now let's, I think there's a bit too much yellow on her dress here, so let's add a color balance layer, and we're going to pull some of the yellow out of there. Invert, and then we will paint off some of the yellow from her dress. Big soft brush. visible again. That's Control Alt Shift E and then we'll go into Camera Raw and do our final steps here. We will add a texture and a clarity and then we're going to come into the radial gradient again and add a radial gradient I'm going to make it soft, softer than last time, there we go, and possibly I'm going to add a radial gradient to Santa as well, add radial gradient, there we go, to Santa, let's turn Okay, and there we go. Let's add in the um, multiply around the corners again to bring your eye to the subject. And then we'll add the curves layer for that matte look. 
just pull up at the bottom corner a little bit. And voila, there is our finished composite. Let's flatten that and save it. And there is our second edit. And if you would like to click off, uh, go ahead if you've learned what you need to learn. And if not, we're going to do um, one last, actually, let's wrap it here. I will do another video with a different backdrop. I feel like two completed edits is a good sample size and uh, we'll save that last um, sample image for another backdrop. I hope this was helpful. Again, please feel free to send myself or Christopher any questions and we will try to answer them as soon as we can. Thank you so much and happy compositing!